Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Local Pundit. I'm Josh Anthony. This is your interview with the Mansfield Matters folks. Yes, uh, Mansfield Matters podcast. And today is, uh, is, a, is a great day because uh, we're leading up to a fantastic Good Friday match at the Stoke Carras against league leaders Mansfield. So I uh, figured we would have Clive and Craig on uh, from from Mansfield Town for Mansfield Town. Am I making it up? Yeah, from Mansfield Town and uh, and have a bit of a chat. So welcome. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Yeah, good to be here. It's good to have you guys on. Uh, excited and congrats uh, on uh, on the Mansfield Matters podcast and uh, how well you guys are doing. Uh, it's good to see uh, other League Two teams having their outlet. And, you know, that's what got me here to you guys. And, uh, you know, um, wanted to have a bit of a chat about football. So this is great. Yeah, appreciate it. It's uh, we never really looked at it as uh, sharing it with others. Really, I think for us, it, it all started back seven years ago. Now, I think we're in our seventh season of of doing the podcast. It was just a way of us uh, sort of uh, connecting and uh, having a chat about Mansfield. Really, none of us at the time when we first started it were massive drinkers, so we didn't really go to the pub and have a chat post game. So it sort of became our little outlet for, from there, really. And we've picked up stragglers and people along the way. So I've been doing it for all seven seasons. And then we've picked up people like Clive and Alan and Nick and everyone who joins us. So we've gone from a group of, I think, three initially started it to a group of seven now. And we've got other people that dip in and out as well. So it's uh, it's always good fun going strong, but we've not yet managed to reach the dizzy heights of League One and, and celebrate success at the end of the season with a, a post-season Nando's successfully. It's always been a post-season Nando's cry fest. So hopefully this year when Clive gets his wallet out, uh, that'll be a little bit different because Clive does owe us all the Nando's as well. So we won't let him oh, uh, forget that. <laughs> I'm a awesome. pensioner. Don't okay. make silly bets yeah. that you can't back up. Fact. <laughs> Uh, I love the origin story. I always start with the origin story. Craig, how long have you been a Mansfield Town fan? Uh, how did you get involved uh, with, uh, well, A, owing, uh, owing the guys Nando's and B, uh, supporting the club? Yeah, well, for me, I've been following uh, following the Stags since probably about 2002 time, which was the last time we got out of League Two and into, into League One. I was never really a massive football fan as a kid growing up, but uh, I was bullied quite a lot at school and wanted something to maybe just sort of try a different outlet and, and meet new people and new friends and everything and was taken along to watch uh, to watch watch the stags and got hooked on the game really and been followed with them ever since um between in probably about seven years or so i've only missed a handful of games i've had a lot of times where i've skipped school and been chased to down the uh, down the street by the uh, the deputy headmaster and things like that for to go and watch uh, silly tuesday night away games and yeah, and I've sort of built my career around it, really. So I'm a marketing person by trade, but a lot of it has come from gaining experience through watching Mansfield. So writing a column for the local newspapers' websites when blogs were a massive thing, when everyone, when everyone else and, and, the, and the dog had a blog when they were massive, um, had one of them. <laughs> uh, went into radio broadcasting for a while, still do a little bit every now and again. Um, started this podcast seven years ago. And a couple of seasons ago, when the Stags got to the playoff final, I was also commentating on it. Really, so for me, it's all been uh, it's all been a bit of a whirlwind, and my journey's always involved Stags somewhere along the along the line. But my history of watching Mansfield is absolutely minuscule compared to compared to Clive's, who's got years of knowledge that he can draw upon. Can always remember teams and and uh, and players from. Uh, the 80s and all the things like that, but ask him who played uh, who played last Saturday. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> no, I have to say that uh, I'm my, my age begins with a seven, and I've been watching Mansfield Town on and off since I was a teenager. Which, so probably 68, 1968 was the first uh, game I went to see as a, an independent young adult, and uh, <clears throat> I've not been um, as devout as some people it, but I've been doing it longer than many and the reason you don't stay devout is life gets in the way yeah. um, you have you get families and responsibilities and your job sometimes takes you away from your roots <clears throat> and so that's been that my experience but you never stop being a fan even if you're a thousand miles away the first fixture you and the only fixture you've got any real interest in is the one for your own team um, I've no tolerance of people who adopt classy teams elsewhere simply because they are mainstream. You know, there are more Manchester United and Liverpool fans in Mansfield, I think, than there are 
Mansfield fans at times. Although this season we tended to have got them all coming out of the woodwork and to, to oh, yeah. listen to them now, um, they've all been um, 100% fans for 100 years, never missed a game. Um, but anyway, Craig's right. I do know an awful lot of stuff, but I can't remember most of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, it's a good balance. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, for me, I get it. You know, I've been newly supporting Manchester. Uh, sorry, I've been supporting Manchester United since 2006. I make no bones about that. Uh, I got bored with uh, watching like bigger clubs like that. Uh, you know, I just I, I lost the love for it. Um, I've been a I've been a follower of um, Rob McElhoney since 2005. So when he bought a football club, um, I was like, you know, this is I, I have I have to follow it. I have to be a part of it. And uh, you know, it's been it's been the most gratifying uh, football. Walk- that I've had in the last, you know, since 2006. So, uh, you know, I can't claim to be one of those uh, followers from Wrexham from way, way back. And um, but it's 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 a great journey to be on. I find and, that really uh, interesting. The- sorry, I just sorry, I find just find that really interesting because I think a lot of Wrexham fans that have sort of picked it up in the states have probably come from Ryan rather than Rob. So it's quite interesting to say that you you was a fan of, of Rob and not Ryan. Yeah. I've been, a, I've been, I work in the film industry and, uh, you know, I've been doing it. I've been here since 2002, originally from Connecticut, but, uh, I found Rob in 2005 when always sunny came on and like, he's always been my idol, uh, in, in what he's done in film and then doing what he's doing now. I'm just like, Oh God, you know, so like I said, li- literally living my dream. So uh, he is, uh, which is awesome. So, uh, to be a part of it is, is very special. There's a li- there's a little bit of resentment uh, in the league to, uh, framework from fans of lots of other clubs at the amount of publicity that um, Wrexham is getting and has had for a, a, a wee while now since the acquisition by the Glitterati. We mm-hmm. um, we never have any of that and to a certain extent that suits us I guess um, mm-hmm. but it is only envy I and mean, we all want to have uh, what Wrexham have got at the moment which is everybody wants to see what they're doing um, and actually, you've provided another service. Without knowing it, you have um, downgraded the stardust factor at Salford because Salford oh. have been the team that everybody wants to know yeah. about because of the uh, acquisition of the club by the class of 92. Mm-hmm. You know, the famous Manchester United players plus an Asian chap who nobody ever sees. So the, the thing is, they've now had their uh, shine rubbed bare by Wrexham. So I'll give you credit for that. Um, uh, and it's wonderful that you are shaking the league up and, and uh, what we need to do now is to uh, when we come and see you on uh, Good Friday is take a little bit of that uh, glitter back with us yeah rewrite the Hollywood script as it were oh yeah, yeah. Um, you guys I think you've scored more goals uh, conceded last you won the most I mean you guys are having a fantastic season uh, what do you do that to this year is it, is it Nigel uh, Clough who's you know a legend in the game or is it just Players, I mean, because you're not a recognized striker. I was listening to one of your games the other day, but uh, what do you equate the the season to? I think first and foremost, it's not this season. I think that's the important thing to highlight. This is not something which has happened overnight. This is something that the Radfords, our owners, John and Carolyn, have built since they've come into the club. They've tried certain certain things, certain managers. And it's we've come close a number of times, but for one factor or whatever, it's not quite got over the line. And since the COVID pandemic, when uh, Graham Cochlin, who's now the Newport County manager, was dreadful in, in charge of Mansfield, in one of the toughest times to be a football manager, by the way, um, and we were basically rock bottom of the league, and the Radfords knew that something had to change. And by virtue of Nigel Clough walking out on Burton to save them money and to save their club, basically when the COVID pandemic hit, he said, like, me and my staff are going to quit um, because that takes our wage out of it, you don't have to pay us, and that will allow you to survive. He was a free agent, so we were able to pick him up with no compensation and with his experience. He His task was to come in over the, the three, four years and, and sort of rebuild the club from top to bottom. So we survived in his first se- season, the COVID pandemic season, had a big overturn of players uh, and then got to the playoff final the, the following season. Season after that, we missed out on the playoffs by, by one goal. But the squad we've built this season and, and the position we're in this season for me It's been very much down to us building a squad, but over the last four transfer windows, so over the last two seasons or so, we've got a core of the squad which was still there when uh, he first arrived, your Ollie Clarks, your George Marish, your Jordan Barry, etc. But we've added players along the way and every single acquisition has been well thought out, well within budget. 
an added absolute quality to it. So it's uh, we're where we are because of Nigel Clough and because of the Radfords, but also because of patience. So many owners will have pulled the trigger when we lost the playoff final. They'll have pulled the trigger last season when, um, you know, when we missed out on the playoffs because that was seen as a backward step. We've had it before with managers, but the owners have stuck with him. They've believed in his projects. They've backed him. And this year, you know, we, we, we're seeing the rewards from it. But like I say, it's not something which has been uh, built up overnight for me. It's It's been a long time in, in coming. Rome wasn't built in a day and Mansfield Town's promotion charge certainly was not. Yeah, and I think for, for on the Wrexham side of things, I think we want, we're so, someone said on one of our shows, uh, they said, you know, we're so used to being, for lack of a better word, you know, the underdog. Now we're the favorite and it's the adjustment of that. And now we're expected to win. All those things keep coming up. And there's a lot of argument about our manager, which I'll ask you guys about later. Uh, but uh, you mentioned Bowery there and Clive Bowery, number nine, playing at right back. Uh, I, I looked at that. I think last time we played, he was playing at right back. What's that all about? He's, he's a recognized striker. Am I correct? He would, is that right? In his time, he's been a recognised striker. Um, not very recently at Mansfield Town, has he? Because he's been Mr. Versatile. He's, um, he's been asked to play just about everywhere on the field. And uh, we've had a problem for a while with due to injuries at the right-back position. And he's filled in very, very well. Um, and I think the important thing is that Nigel Clough trusts him. And there are one or two players that Nigel Clough has absolute faith in. That doesn't mean to say they don't make mistakes because everybody does. It's human; they're all human beings. But yeah. he, he he can build his team around people he has confidence in, and Bauer is one of them. And he, we're you know it's towards the end of his career as well, so he's, he's mm. he wants to play wherever he's invited to. Jordan yeah. Barry is the type of player who just gives his absolute everything. He, he's brought in to Nigel Clough since the day he walked in the building, and he's he's just embodied it. He knows that he wasn't really. You know, the type of striker which Nigel Clough likes. And he said, Gaffer, I'll play absolutely anywhere. He's filled in at centre back, he's filled in at left back, right back, wherever we've needed him. I even think that if we had a goalkeeping crisis, he'd put the gloves on and do a <laughs> damn good job as well. He is that sort of guy. He's a lovely guy off the pitch as well, which, which matters. And, you know, football teams are a, a, an interesting thing because realistically, you only keep them together for one, maybe two years maximum before you have a turnover in players and managers. <laughs> Mansfield's a, a different thing to that. We've had players who have been here for four or five seasons now who absolutely love the town, love the area. And um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, just absolutely um, embody everything there is about Mansfield and Jordan Bowery is absolutely uh, key to that. I think the other thing to, pair, to, to inform you about is that we have some knockbacks on the way. Last season and the season before, we had horrendous injury problems and we didn't have the depth of squad to cover for those. So we were having to make shift every time we played, put a team out. We were having to make use of players that would play out of position. Um, and uh, this season, the start of this season, we had, you know, the disadvantage of having two very, very key players out for the season because of injuries, unanticipated injuries. And mm -hmm. uh, we, Alfie Kilgore was the player that we bought as a central defender. And we were going to build our team around him. And then mm. all of a sudden, he ruptures his Achilles tendon innocently in a game. Nobody tackled him. It was just one of those horrible things. And yep. he's still in the stages of recovery. It takes a long time. But yep. a measure of the club's relationship with its um, players is that his contract has been pushed back another year because he's not been able to play for a year. But the club says, well, that's not your fault. We will, mm -hmm. honor, we will honor that in the way by extending your contract without any negotiation. Um, and he may not be able to come back and play at the level that we, mm. we expected him to before. That's the risk you take. Um, having said that, we've had another uh, player um, whose recovery is about a year in the making, and he's he came off the bench. Was it uh, last week, Craig? Yeah, he was on the bench. He didn't quite get on. Clough was trying yeah. to throw him on, but I think time run run yeah. out. Elliot Hewitt, who was the player of the season the year before, yeah, he, he's not ready to start a game at the moment because he's mm. not. You know, he's not had the number four. The, the, Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, he's a cracking player. Really is a really good player and the sort of player that you want in your side. So I can understand the, the management wanting him back as soon as possible. But, you know, the, the one thing they're not doing is risking his, develop, his, his recovery by pushing him too hard. Yeah, and that's one thing which Nigel Clough has learned from because actually early on in his tenure as manager, he did rush players back too quickly and we did have a lot of square pegs in round holes. Um, and, and therefore, we actually 
sort of that was a bit of a detriment to our progress, especially in that playoff season. Um, you know, Clive mentioned there, Elliot Hewitt, who's been out for a year, Alfie Kilgore um, as well. He was our captain at the start of the season, but also, you know, to, um, going up to Christmas time, <clears throat> Reese Oates was playing quite a lot. He'd just come back from an injury. He's had a little bit of uh, on and off with injuries. He got a, a nasty injury on uh, New Year's Day at Stockport. His contract was, was up in the summer and everyone was saying, oh, that's it. He'll never play in a Mansfield shirt again. He, but... Nigel Clough at the recent managerial night said, no, it's, we're going to give him another year. We're going to honour him. We're going to look after him. And whether or not he plays again, similar to Elliot Hewitt and Alfie Kilgore, they looked after him. That is what sets Mansfield apart. And that is why players want to come and play for Nigel Clough. That's why the likes of um, Aidan Flint, who obviously came in on a free in the, in the summer, um, signed for us because numerous options to play in the Championship and League One or even uh, abroad. He would have had offers coming out of his ears. But he wanted to play for a manager who can bring success and can build a culture that people want to work in. And I think people often forget that whilst football is a game, it is also a job. It is a working environment and you have to keep people happy. And, you know, football, like we said, has got such a high turnover, especially where there's money involved. There's not a lot of care in football. But Nigel Clough really looks after his players. And that's the difference because a happy culture will breed success. And even when you have a little wobble, whether that's a, a defeat or whatever, a little poor run of form, that belief and that togetherness will get you through. And that's ultimately the difference. And I think that is why Mansfield have got themselves into the, this position where they are, because that culture has been built over the last three, four years. The, uh, the analogy that I can give to it is everybody knows Ted Lasso. Everybody has watched the show, loves it on Apple TV and loves the culture around that. <laughs> it's very similar to that. It's a, it's a culture not just based on belief, but based on love and care and community spirit. And uh, we've got that in abundance at Mansfield. And I think that uh, says a lot as to as to where we are. And we do it quietly. Craig, can mm -hmm. I just say, I've no idea who Ted Lasso is. No, I know you wouldn't. <laughs> just slightly out of your brain. I'll tell you what, I'll get you a, I'll get you a subscription to Apple TV Plus. Uh, yeah. And, and you, you, you will sit and watch it and I guarantee you'll be hooked. First time I watched oh, it, I yeah. binged it in a day. It's great. Okay, it's good fun, really good fun. Or we can yeah. send, I will send you the links to the original, uh, to the originals on NBC. They were over here, um, but it's it's a, it's actually a really good watch. I mean, uh, I I, might, I was going to bring up Flint. You brought a guy, you guys brought him up before. I watch a few of your games and watch him against us. He's solid. I mean, the guy is a monster. Uh, it looks like he controls the back really well, obviously. But uh, as far as like culture wise, <clears throat> it seems exactly like you know what are uh, tr trying to do Rob and Ryan what they're trying to do with Humphrey and everybody with the town and everyone being positive to it and yes you brought up uh, Ted Lasso there you know belief having belief and being positive you know a lot of football even on our show or our shows sometimes get a little bit negative when we talk about you know the manager and lost the room draw, lost the dressing room um but you know like that you know not everything's gonna be perfect it's about how you bounce back and they're keeping that positive i mean that's why you know for lack of a better word i really like jose Mourinho. his teams will used to run through brick walls for him because he was behind him no matter what so um but nigel Clough seems to obviously uh have the, have the heartbeat of the club and that's that's pretty nice to see um on that note like what's made the team so good this year i think you guys play a four three one two is that correct so no striker is or or is, or is or oh, those two wingers, how, or how does that work out for you guys? We, we have a back four and everyone plays where the hell they want. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the success we're having at the moment is very much based on the back four and the goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. We've got that yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And even if it's Bowery playing in there as a makeshift, we have that right. And that's the difference between this year and the previous two seasons. It's no mistake we've conceded fewer, the few, fewer goals than any other team in the league. And in fact, we've gone a little bit floppy in this last few games. But, you know, overall, we've conceded fewer. We've actually scored more without a recognised striker as well. Uh, we, have, we beat Bradford City at their ground last week and we had five goal scorers in the five goals we scored. Yeah. That's, I think, the beauty of what's developed at Mansfield is that we can score goals from just about anywhere. So, you know, it, it's, um, it's good that we're not dependent on one. We were pretty much dependent on Reese Oates for, as our out-and-out goal-getter. And his injury has not damaged us in the way it might have done had we not got a, the ability to score goals from around the, the 11. 
Yeah, and I think what that's done as well, just on the back of that, is it's given other people the opportunity. So Will Swan, for example, was a top scorer last season on loan from Nottingham Forest. We paid big money to get him in the summer and we gave him a huge contract, one of the biggest contracts I've seen for a Mansfield player for a very long time. And that's a big, big investment on a young player. Um, but again, he then started the season with this expectation on his shoulders and absolutely went down like a lead balloon. He was woeful. He just could not hit the ground running. Whether or not there was something in his personal life, we, we don't know. But what, for whatever reason, he just couldn't get going and therefore couldn't get in the team. Reese Oates's injury um, then opened the door for him because in early January, we had no plans to sign another striker. Um, we had no plans to, to add one anyway without getting one out. Um, so Reese Oates's injury sort of opened the door for Will Swan. And Will Swan, in credit to him, has absolutely grabbed that opportunity in both hands. I think he's on nine goals now for the season, might be 10. Um, eight of those nine goals or nine of those 10, whichever one it is, I haven't got the stats right in front of me at the minute, um, have come since the turn of the calendar year when he's got back in the squad. He's player playing with confidence and he's, play, he's now churning man of the match performances out every week. And he's got a, a striker who we brought in, you know, towards the back end of the window in Tom Nichols from, from Gillingham, who's a recognised goal scorer as well. He scored a number of goals with, with Crawley, I believe, in his previous uh, career um, spells, who he's now keeping out of the team. And it's really, really competitive. But it's that belief and that sort of man management from Nigel Clough, which has said, right, you've had a, a turbulent spell, but do you know what? I still believe in you and now go and get the rewards. And it all comes down to to that really and uh, like we were sort of saying um, we've got a squad who can score goals from from anywhere anybody can can chip in and it's quite funny because we we all sort of saw at the start of the season we all thought oh Aidan Flint's coming he's got a fantastic goal scoring record he's going to be a real threat from set pieces quiz question for you how many uh, headers has Aidan Flint scored this season from corners uh, it's less than one <laughs> none <laughs> None. Wow. He's useless. <laughs> Absolutely none. And do you know what? It's great because um, what it does show is that perceptions are only a picture. Unless you really stand and stare and really do that investigation work into what's there, it mm -hmm. shows that we're, we're, we're not just this one player team. We're not at the top of the league because we've got Aiden Flint at the back. We're not top of the league because we've got DKD banging goals in left, right and centre. We're top of the league because of all these collective jigsaw piece puzzles which we've put in put in place. We are where we are because we've we've moved together as a unit. And uh, yeah, I think there's a, a lot of contributing uh, factors to that. I think the other thing to bear in mind, and it's perfectly true at Wrexham as well as it is at Mansfield, is the fans' role in, in the success. Absolutely. Because uh, before the COVID situation... Our average gate was 3,000 odd. Maybe less. If we got 4,000, it was a great turnout. Yeah. Um, and we've got, an inadequate, we've got an inadequate ground. We've only got three stands in our ground. We've got a decrepit stand on the facing the main stand. Um, and therefore, we have a limited capacity. And bear in mind, we have to accommodate away fans. We're obligated to do that. Um, we're now running out of seats for home fans because we, we're regularly getting between seven and seven and a half thousand home fans. Um, now that's part of the phenomenon of being successful and if we weren't that that wouldn't be the case and the same sure. with Wrexham now you, you can't accommodate people I mean um, no. we'd have loved to have had two or three times the allocation of away seats mm -hmm. for this game and we would have sold them um, but you yeah. know we have to, what we've got it's live on TV on Sky TV so people that can't go will at least be able to watch it um, and delivered properly you know, um, my, my sorry, apologies. Please. My internet is a little choppy. I don't know why that is, but my internet's a little bit choppy. So I apologize on that uh, for people that are watching everything. Uh, on the game on the weekend, yeah, it's, uh, we can watch it on ESPN Plus here this weekend. So we've been going on Good Friday. So I'm excited to see about that. And uh, I think you know, 12, almost 13,000 people will go to that game. Are you guys going to travel yeah. to go watch the match? Or you, say, you know, ah, uh, no, you see, this is the this is the annoying thing, really, because the tickets. There's a, obviously with, with Wrexham, there's a, a big Hollywood factor, which whenever people play, the tickets will, will go quite early. We have got this huge fan base and we've got, a, we've you know, we've got an extraordinary amount of season ticket holders now. And our ticketing system has been set up in a way it's transformed over the years because maybe two, three years ago, you couldn't actually physically buy a ticket for an away game online. You had to go down to the ground and queue. Um, and it was an absolutely horrible experience, as it was for the staff as well as, as the fans. 
Uh, but now we've got this online system where it's season ticket holders um, first priority and it's one ticket per season ticket holder. Well, we got given what? Let's say a thousand tickets to, to Wrexham. I can't remember the exact number, but we've got 5,000 season ticket holders. So it's first on the button, whoever's quickest. Clive usually sources my tickets when I uh, go to away games. I don't always get to travel with work commitments and financial commitments as well. So Clive's usually my ticket man. Um, Clive logged on at the usual time, had two in his basket, but by the time he got through to the payment window, they'd all sold, they'd all sold out. He's since managed to secure a ticket elsewhere, but with it being on uh, Sky, I'll watch it with my dad, which and uh, we'll have some of the other Mansfield Matters lads around as well. So uh, we'll all be watching it together. Oh, so Clive, yeah, so, <laughs> and I'd, I'd been quite happy to watch it on TV had I not been given the opportunity for a ticket from an une unexpected source. So, um, but I, I'm looking forward to going to Wrexham. I've not been to Wrexham since the last time Mansfield were seriously promoted, and mm -hmm. this is way back. Uh, and, when, and Wrexham were a team at that time that was vying for promotion and been at the top of the league all season. And mm. in the same league, we've got Crystal Palace and Brighton. And we know what's happened to them since that time. And, mm -hmm. and Mansfield, all fighting for the top spot. And Mansfield needed to win at Wrexham to get uh, the championship. We were already promoted, but we needed the, to win to get the championship. And in so doing, Crystal Palace were promoted and not Wrexham. <laughs> so there's a there's a little nucleus of Stags fans okay. in South East Lo South West London since that time because we got them promoted. Yeah, I've been a bit been bit been a bit sooner than that. Obviously, the last time uh, we were we took on Wrexham uh, in the league was in the conference days back when we uh, won it some what 15 or so years ago now. And uh, in the last few games, Wrexham were one of those away games. I would go quite regularly. Then I was fortunate enough to to commentate and I think we actually slipped up when we when we played them and it narrowed the gap and made it a little bit nervy for for the finish because we had a stu I think we had four games in a week or something because of postponements and horrible little trip but uh, yeah I'm I'm disappointed not to have managed to get a ticket this week it's obviously a, a ground that I've not been to for a while but having been before it doesn't mm -hmm. bother me that much and actually I go to London on the uh, on the Saturday for uh, a couple of days with, with my missus so actually the early morning train having not travelled to Wrexham will uh, make me less of a grumpy arsehole so uh, she's probably <laughs> thankful that I didn't get a ticket it is a sign of the times though on on the the game I'm I've been referring to the uh, there was 21,000 people at, at Wrexham's oh, wow. recreation ground in those mm -hmm. in those days uh, and there must have been about a thousand uh, fans of uh, Crystal Palace there as well. Yeah. It was yeah. really strange. And of course, the ground was pretty much terracing in those days, so you could accommodate the larger number of uh, people. Um, this it's... new stand behind the goal at Wrexham, I'm guessing that's being used by home fans now at the moment. Uh, um, yeah, and... the four, they're called the four walls, so that's, uh, I think it's got about 4,500 in. It's not the, not the it's a temporary stand, um, about 4,500 in there. When it's finally done, the, the actual permanent one will be 5,500. Um, but yeah, I think it's all uh, home fans as well. So I think the allocation for the away fans is uh, like right behind your bench on the left side. So I think uh, I'll probably yeah. be able to see it by watching the game. It's an interesting, so it's an interesting prospect that because obviously clubs only have to give a minimum. I think it's a certain percentage that they have to give, and at this time of the season, we're starting to do it now as well. Um, they're only giving the minimum percentage because that whole travelling support and that whole thing of um, fan support, the twelfth man, so to speak, plays a massive part in it. And uh, obviously, you know, teams that went to Wrexham in the conference when when you won that last season. Um, felt the effects of that you could really hear the stadium rock in the documentary showcases that very very well um mm -hmm. but it, it's interesting that teams now who've got these big stadiums who can allocate big away following don't want to, to give it up because why should they because they have an advantage in that um it's yep. the same with mk dons we're waiting to hear back we've sold our initial allocation we're waiting to hear back if we can have more tickets to that but we've still got them to play they're still in and around us and with results on that game, it could well end up that if if they beat us, they could go ahead of us or whatever, depending on how results go. So why would they want an extra ten percent of Mansfield fans to go? They'd rather have the empty stadium, the emptier seats, than than have that advantage. And we've done it ourselves now with with the North Stand. Like Clive said earlier, we've only got three stands because the Bishop Street stand is uh, is is about as useful as Josh and 
my Masiebi or whatever his name was, the, the former Wrexham keeper who was loved by Alan Marriott all those years ago. True Wrexham fans will know what I'm talking about on that one. Um, yeah. But uh, it, it's a stand which doesn't function. So now we've got the away fans in the north stand behind the goal and then just the Ian Greaves stand and, and the Quarry Lane end. But what we've now done is we've taken a proportion of that north stand back and given teams a lesser amount of tickets. And actually that's having real good effect on us because on a Saturday we're selling those extra te- seats and we could sell it twice over. And I really mm-hmm. do think that that fan support makes a massive difference at this this uh, stage of the season. But, you know, Wrexham fans don't think that by giving us the minimum uh, allocation that that will be an advantage because Mansfield Town fans have loud voices and my God, will they make themselves heard on Sat- on uh, on Friday. I, I, I'm excited about this game. Last time out was a nil-nil draw uh, at your place. Uh, I don't believe that uh, Mullen was playing then. Uh, I, I could I probably should have looked that up before coming on. But going into this, I want before we get to the game on Friday, I wanted to talk to you about the league in general. You know, I, I, this is the first time I followed League Two like this closely. Obviously, it's part of our part of the show. Um, the we're in the business end of the season. Obviously, there's six or seven games left, depending on who's where, where we're at. 41st game of the season. Uh, the season. I mean, it can go any other way. I've never seen anything like this. You know, I'll be at three three teams go up automatically. What do you make of the What do you make of the run, uh, top and bottom, for where we're at? How did like How did we get here? It's kind of a, kind of incredible to watch, right? Yeah, in many ways, Mansfield's the latecomer to this uh, uh, elite club because we didn't start as well as Wrexham did and Notts County did and, and others. Um, and then more recently, uh, Milton Keynes Dons have come from pretty much nowhere. Um, and the teams that were vying seem to have dropped away a little bit, Barrow and Crew. It is a very interesting league. And all the way down to about 15 or 16, people still believe they can get promoted this year. We, yeah, it's we a, have a Newport a real... County fan that comes on. Ooh, sorry, go ahead. There's been, sorry, we have a Newport County fan that still comes comes on our show a lot. Uh, Kieran, good guy. Uh, he comes on and talks about them getting that. And he's, he plugs in every now and then his scores and like that. He's on all the time. He's pretty, 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 uh, pretty cool about it. Uh, Stockport, I think, is probably the best team I would say I, I've seen this year comfortably. I mean, I don't know if everyone agrees with that. Although they did us a favor on on uh, on on Saturday match. Sorry about that. Yeah. They... They're a di- they did both di- of us a favour, didn't they? They did, yeah. yeah. They're, a, a t- they're a difficult side. They've had a, a good run, obviously. we I think we were a little bit surprised that, that they had a bit of a poor start because they had the knock-on effect of the playoff final last year. But we were no surprise to see them pick up a little bit of momentum. And that's why it's been key for us, really, to get those wins in early doors. And to, you know, let's not forget Mansfield went a long time unbeaten in all competitions um, and were mm-hmm. really, really difficult to beat. And we've only lost a handful of games as well. So... Um, and we actually beat Stockport 2-0 on New yeah. Year's Day at their ground. And that oh, was not that. anticipated. I have to say, as a Stags fan, I thought yeah, it was exactly. going to be a, a real tough challenge and we we dealt with them properly. And, yeah. uh, and grudgingly, their fans agreed as well. I'd say probably one of the best sides we've seen is probably Crew. I think that they're, they're one of the sides that really did their homework on us. Lee Bell's a, a former Stags player, an up-and-coming young manager who's very well tactically aware and he's he's got them got them playing out. It was a really difficult game on the opening game of the season when we went there um, and it was a difficult game at home. I think we ended up losing. That was one of the losses, wasn't it, Clive? The, the crew home game as well. We, we drew Lost at their two. ground. We were 2 nil up and it ended up 2 all at their ground early yeah. in the season and we should have we should have won there. And then uh, uh, they came and did a good job on us. They, Lost 2-1, uh, didn't we? We did yeah. lose 2-1. It was, in fact, it was the first home defeat of the season for us, yeah. I think. Yeah, they're the best side for me other than Milton Keynes have beaten us as well at home. But generally speaking, we don't get beaten at home. And and what is the case is nobody scores three goals against us either, which is the other thing, you know? Yeah. Um, Our defeats have been very narrow defeats. It's you know, we've not been hammered by anyone. We've it's it's been and then even then, some of those defeats I'm thinking like Swindon, there's other factors in it like refereeing decisions or sloppy mistakes. But to and and bad decisions as well by the manager. I mean he will admit which is not very uh, Mr. Clough isn't very good at self-deprecation. He, he takes his <laughs> he takes his job very seriously, um, but he has admitted that uh, the Swindon result when we lost two one at their ground was down to him because yeah. he threw he threw the aforementioned Mr. Flint up to try and uh, oh, get okay. the game. It was one all at that point, and then we conceded because mm-hmm. he wasn't on at his station when mm-hmm. he had he been. He, we, we, like, he may well have prevented their goal, um, mm-hmm. which was in the very last minute. So I think we have. Like every team, we have drawn games we should have won. We have lost games we should have drawn. But overall, we've done very, very well. As, uh, and the average is 
that speak for themselves. Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean a jot because we played a, a team third from bottom mm -hmm. uh, last home game, uh, Colchester. Colchester. Uh, and they came with a game plan that served them well. Um, mm -hmm. It was very cynical, it was very snide, lots of time wasting, lots of conning the I referee. But they scored a goal early on. That was down to our mistake. Yeah, we managed to get the scruffiest goal I've ever seen in my life to get back on on bar with them. Um, yeah, uh, but their game plan worked, and their, the point for them was invaluable. Yeah, and I think that. That's sort of the thing that we've got to take into consideration now between now and the end of the season. We may be top. We may have the best wins, the, be the, the least losses, the best goals scored, the, the least goals conceded, all of that. But that means absolutely sod all in six, seven games time if we're not in that top three. If you, if you ask me and Clive, do we care about winning the title? We may well give you different answers, but I think both deep down would say... No, we do not because I'll, all I'll you settle want to for see, third. I'll settle for third yeah. place. Yeah. Third absolutely. place in that top three. Anywhere in that top three is absolutely fine because we just want to get promoted and we deserve third to be place. Go on holiday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's not. I talk about both sides of my mouth in that one too. Sorry, there's a bit of like I talk about both sides of my mouth. And like one day I'm like I want to win the league. Another day well, I think we're very lucky to be in third because we've been you know up and down in and out. Like we haven't been so consistent. Um, mm. You know, there's there we have some pockets and things about his league subs and getting people off and injuries and things like that so like some days i'm like hey we're here we might as well try to win the league still you know we have a six pointer this weekend uh and then we play stockport as well but like getting up and not going into the playoffs which to me if you go into the playoffs you are literally uh you know you're you're, you're in a crapshoot obviously so yeah you know i'm kind of like you guys it's like yeah, yeah third is good but i'd love to win the league do you know it, at the end of the season looking back when you look at the stats and all of, all of that it would piss me off if we didn't win the title, but I don't care because ultimately we've got the, the goal, which is to get up into a high division and to have right. new experiences. And that's what the, anybody wants at the start of, start of the campaign. So, you know, yeah. I think this I, Friday... I, you know, it's, it's about consistency as well because winning the league is fabulous. It's great to have a piece of silverware yeah. you can stick in your, in your trophy sure. cabinet. But Forest Green Rovers did that two seasons ago. Yeah. Yeah. They won this league. Yeah. They won this league at a canter. Mm. And, and to their credit, they deserve to win the league. Um, mm. And then they've, they've messed around in, in the in the season last season in League One, mm -hmm. and now they're um, the the back in our yeah. league. And in fact, in fact, it's almost certain they're going to drop down to the National League, sure. and that'll be the last we see of them at this level, because they yeah. haven't done the consistent things right, you know. And they've got a bit of a bizarre owner. I think he tends to to blow hot and cold in terms of policy, but. We uh, we don't want to do that. I'd rather go up third and then have you know two or three consolidatory seasons in the in the league one before we challenge again. Yeah. Than to throw everything at it and then uh, find ourselves wondering why the hell we're back where we started. Yeah, I'd much rather have a long country walk than a all thrills roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think before, the, before we I'm there sorry. is one thing that that all three of our clubs have experience of, and that's being in what we refer to as the pit of misery, which is the <laughs> National League. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and Stockport, of course, they were in uh, League North, uh, National League North for a while because of mm. their demise. And Wrexham took a long time to get back into uh, the position where they can get back in the yeah. uh, out of the pit of misery. Went we down took alongside five, us. We yeah. took five, five, five seasons to do it and came out on top uh, after five seasons. But... Uh, uh, and... Um, the Stockport, I've actually done remarkably well because their yeah. their uh, their ascendancy has been rapid, um, mm -hmm. and if they get promoted again this season, I think that you've got to ha take your hat off yeah. to them. They have every chance to do it. Hopefully, you can be a part of that. I know, uh, Craig. I know you got to go in a couple of minutes. I, I was going to bring up talking about North County and their demise. I feel bad for them, to be honest with you. Oh no, we yeah, enjoy that. Not, yeah, we enjoy that. Let's not. from us on, on that. You to can be fair. take for granted we're enjoying their their problems at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, before you, I know, Craig. Like, you got to go. Just a uh, game thoughts on the weekend. Uh, what what are Wrexham? What's Wrexham going to score on you guys at home? Is it going to be a three one or? Or four two. We're gonna. What's the plan? A nil nil again? What huge, do you think? Of? Huge, huge game for both sides. Uh, this is a season defined game for both sides. Mansfield, for my money, have to at least draw. Obviously, if uh, Wrexham do win, we will stay top on goal difference unless you absolutely hammer us, which I really don't see. Um, but one. in terms, in terms of uh, yeah, it needs to be like a lot by like 10, 12 goals, doesn't it, or whatever. Um, but in terms of mentality. The worst thing we can do this weekend on Friday is lose the game. We have to go there 
get at least a point. I think we will be really, really tough to break down and get a goal against us. I think you probably will get one because I think it's likely we have been a little bit more susceptible to conceding in the last um, probably month or so. But our back was our back was to come out fighting. We had a bit of a poor result against Colchester. And every time that we have that little bit of a poor result, Nigel Clough gets the boys fired up and we come out fighting. You know, prior to Bradford, we'd had a poor result in that one. We came out and we were 3-0 up within 20 minutes. This side will be there. They'll know the occasion. They'll be level-headed enough to deal with it. But I think it'll be a very, very fiery game, an interesting game. And I think Mansfield will, st- will, will sneak it. I don't think I'll say this in my podcast predictions late when we do our podcast, but I'm going to back us to go. I'm going to back us for a three-one, three-one oh, win. I thought you were going to push the, to push the button, like the, the the button. I was going to say, okay, see you later. Um, no, I, I, I proper six-pointer, proper heavyweight match. Uh, Clive, what are you what are you thinking? I have to be careful when I, I uh, make any uh, <laughs> forecast now because it costs me money. But the um, I'm going to go for a, a, a rip-roaring game, and I'm going to see Mullin will score three goals. You'll get a hat trick. But you will lose four ah. three. I mean, to okay. be fair, Clive's predictions have these mental predictions have come true. So going back to the very start of the show, let's finish uh, my little bit off with uh, the arc of the story. We uh, beat Harrogate nine um, two in our game. We didn't historically do well against Harrogate at home, and uh, that's why Clive predicted. I think he went for an eight nil win, and uh, he said, "If we win out eight nil, I will buy you all a Nando's." Bear in mind, there's seven of us in the group, and Nando's is quite expensive. We sco- I, in my personal opinion, let's let's get some more judgment on this from, from you before I duck out. In my personal opinion, we reached the eight goal thresh mo- uh, threshold mark. All right, it wasn't eight nil and it wasn't an eight goal margin, but we still scored the eight goal. We had a phenomenal game. Clive at least has to foot seventy five percent of the bill. That's that that works. I, I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's yeah, fair, fair enough. Fair. Right, and, and with that, I have to go. Good luck on Friday, right. um, and Thank look you. forward to chatting to you soon. Yeah, absolutely, good to meet you. Uh, talk soon, Craig. Cheers. Gotcha. Uh, he's got a prediction. Can I just say, in my defence, no time during the game was the score ever eight nil. No. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, so, you, so you, maybe you maybe you can buy them the drinks, but maybe not the full Nando's. You know, uh, you know, something like that. But um, no, it's going to be a good, good game on Friday. I'm excited back, and if you know whatever way you know whatever way it goes down, I'd love to have you guys back on. I'd love to even come on yours if, if I'm ever if I'm invited. Uh, here I am inviting myself, but uh, you know it's good to meet uh, other other supporters from other clubs. It's happy to and uh, happy to do this. So it's, it's I, I think one of the the joys of football is people have different viewpoints, different opinions. Some based on knowledge, some based on pure fandom. Um, uh, yep. and others uh, and, and obviously someone who is not resident in the UK um, but has t- uh, attached themselves to a lower league team have, have you know all credit to you because I know there's a bit of showbiz connectivity with your concern but the reality is people are in far off climes do not attach themselves to the crew Alexandras and the Mansfield Towns and the Doncaster Rovers they attach themselves to the Manchester United, the Manchester City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs. And that's yep. how it is. Now, yep. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a student of football, but I'm, I, 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 like, I can watch football. But I have to say, at the moment, I much prefer to watch football in League Two, live or on television, th- than the Premiership, because I think the Premiership is so sterile now um, that it, it doesn't have that fit against what I think is an, a normal fan. Apart yep. from that, it's very expensive as well. So if you're a For family sure. man with, with a couple of kids, you're looking at £250 to go to watch Easily. one yeah. of the premiership sides before you even buy a burger. You know, it's... Uh, yeah. So, yeah. but, you know, we, we, we can only be what we are. And, and uh, the one thing's for sure, whether Mansfield win or lose or draw, I'll still be a Mansfield fan afterwards. Uh, I have a catch line on one of my social media accounts. And it's right. after my name, it says over 50 years of ruined weekends. <laughs> and, and that sums up watching a lower league team, in my opinion. I, we've no, never I, played I, at a higher, we've never played at a higher league than the second tier, which is now the championship. In, it used championship. to be called, uh, yeah, it used to be called league, uh, second division in, in the days when we were there. We had one mm-hmm. season following mm-hmm. our success at Wrexham, one season in that league. And we've never been anywhere near it since. And we are in the fourth division uh, at the yep. moment. We have time in the well, fifth I fancy division. You guys. 
I fancy you guys to go up this, even what happens on this weekend is big six, four, the six pointer. I fancy you guys definitely to go up. You guys, uh, you know, I watched you on the weekend, uh, you know, against the Colchester game. And I too agree with you. I, you know, even yes, I will. Everyone knows I've been following United since 2006. I got so disillusioned by watching it, all the things that are going on, uh, you know, outside of the club and everything. I get more gratification watching a League Two side, even watching Chesterfield go up uh, this past weekend, watching those clips. And then it means so much more. Um, you know, so I get much more joy out of it too. You know, Chesterfield, too. Chesterfield is, is Mansfield's arch rival. It's not Notts County. You surprisingly to people that don't understand, Notts County oh. are almost irrelevant to us. <laughs> They're in the same county, but we, you know, we have a, a sort of bearable relationship with them. On the other hand, Chesterfield, which is just over the other side of the county boundary in Derbyshire, there's an absolute hatred between both sets of fans. Oh, I mean, it's ridiculous. And uh, we, it's given us great delight that they've had six seasons in the pit of misery, um, <laughs> and they've had they've had some torment and troubles. But to be to their credit, they've won this uh, national league this season Quite with early. plenty left in the tank. Mm -hmm. They obviously have a good team. They obviously have a, a a pool of resource. Whether they've overstretched financially, time will tell. Um, mm -hmm. But they they are coming up to our league. I hope. Mm -hmm that neither us nor Wrexham or Stockport will be playing them next year. I don't think we that's will my, be. I, I, that's my... Well, I just think that if we don't, if any of the three of us don't do it now, we've bottled it. We've, we've, yes. we've shot ourselves in the foot. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think uh, my... Yeah, I think Mansfield, Stockport, Wrexham will go up, and I think Crew is probably my uh, my four. Maybe Crew. Uh, so it's going to You know, be, the playoffs... Uh, the playoffs are a horrible thing. I mean, Ugh. don't get me wrong. If you don't get in the top three, you're settled for uh, for being in the playoffs because why wouldn't you? But it's awful. You then have two very, very difficult games against another team. Mm -hmm. And then you go to Wembley. And by the time you've played at Wembley, whether you've won or lost, you've lost a month of the closed season. So the club hasn't been able to do its recruitment properly. The players don't start the following season properly uh, pre-trained because they've not had the time. It's mm -hmm. awful, and awful. Uh, we had a we had a you know we, two seasons ago Stags played uh, Port Vale at Wembley, um, seventeen and a half thousand Mansfield fans turned up. Unfortunately, none of the players did, and uh, we <laughs> lost. We lost very comfortably to Port Vale three 0 We had a player sent off ridiculously for stupidity, and um, we were never ever going to win it. Um, and, and that's what happens, you know. That's that's another one of the fifty years of ruined weekends for me. We'll have to, I'll, have to, I'll definitely tag you in the socials. You got to uh, uh, message me. I think you're on the email or put your socials out there, and I, I will definitely tag you in this too. On that note, by the way, too, um, you know, if we do go into the playoffs, we play the the, the Rexham team are traveling over here to, on July 24th to go to uh, up, 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 up the street to San Jose, which is the game we're going to. I mean, if we get into like May or whatever, that's that's not good for rest. That's not good for the players. So um, I agree with you. I mean, players that. are incredibly tired at the end of the season. Um, and if you throw three big matches in the playoffs into the into the thing, the, the adrenaline takes them through, but they are going to be slow to recover, and you know it, it just sets the following season back. And uh, yeah. and it's difficult to recruit players if they don't know what league they're going to be recruiting into. You know, you can't Absolutely. go along to a player and say, "Would you like to join Manchester Town?" Um, yeah, what league are you in? Well, we can't tell you that yet. So <laughs> you lose a whole month. Yeah, you, know, you lose a whole month. You know, and then the best players will get snapped up as well. So, yeah, I mean, Nigel Clough's brother is our recruitment specialist, and uh, you know he spends a lot of time looking at players, even when we're not looking to buy, because he wants to know who's doing what, what their attitude to change is, what their con when their contracts expire, what they might want by way of reward. It's a it's a complicated mm -hmm. job. Um, yeah. And it's a bit of a luxury at, at our level to have uh, uh, the management team that uh, that Nigel Clough has built around himself. Uh, I would imagine think, our, our management team is probably the most expensive in this league. What do you think of Phil Parkinson before I let you go? What are your thoughts on him? He's got plenty of experience. He um, he's, he's probably right at this level and maybe League One. Uh, I, I guess I don't. What I don't know is how good his man management is. Um, uh, and uh, players know better than, than than spectators whether the the manager's doing that bit right. Uh, you often hear the, the the phrase "he's lost the dressing room." We're not talking about Phil now, but but managers do it. We we felt that 
Coughlin, when he was at Mansfield, lost the dressing room. We have no proof of that. It's just a feeling we got, you know? Yeah. Manchester yeah. United, there's been a period of time when people are saying, he's lost the dressing room. Well, Several you times. know, I, yeah, I, I have to say, when you've got players on, you know, contracts worth £200,000 a week, if they can't get their heads out their asses and play football, they shouldn't be playing football. They need to yeah. recognise how lucky they are. Yeah, look at Jaden Sancho. To me, like, what a waste. You know, it's what talking about, you know, talking about Manchester United. But what that was happened. that was obviously down to a, a relationship problem with the management. Um, yeah. Or some chemistry anyway. Yeah. Um, Marcus Rashford, on the other hand, I don't know. He, the man's wasted his talent. Yeah. Did, did I, you watch I, him play play for England in the week? I, it was I did. Yeah. Tepid. It's... Tepid. Yeah. Yeah, and his body he, language says, "I'm not bothered about this. I don't really." He's not bothered, it. and I have I have people that are kind of close to him that are like, just like, you know, maybe his head's not in it anymore, which is unfortunate. He has everything in front of him. He'll leave. I think he'll leave. Um, but you know, as far like Parkinson losing the dressing room, I think Parkinson might be a gr better man manager than a game management manager in regards to like he subs late and things like that. That's what gets me worried. You know, I, and I give him full credit for where we're at, and I still think um. He'll get us promoted, and uh, you know, he's, I said I'm parking the Parkinson, I'm parking the Parky stuff for the rest of the season because it gets too toxic, and I'm like, all right, you know, yeah. well, he's here, you know, so it gets. He's what you've got, and you're not going to change at this point, and it wouldn't pr be productive to do so anyway. The no. uh, the reality is, if he gets the club promoted, he may well be attracted to another club because success sure. gives you a shop yep. window, and likewise, if he doesn't. It won't, and I think that's the thing. And likewise, you've got people like Mullin. I don't know what his contract's on, but if 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 Wrexham are promoted this year, then there's going to be people sniffing around Mullin who will offer him more money and, and a higher playing level. Him and Lee signed to 27, so they've got him. They got him for till 2027. So they they extended their contracts in January, so they're not going to go anywhere. But I think no matter what, there's going to be. Oh, well, they might do if the, if the club are offered enough money, of course. Sure. Yeah, they need to replace them. Well, uh, Marriott, who hasn't really got a sniff in yet, uh, you know, he's yeah, he's a good player. Um, you know, probably one for next year. He doesn't play that much, but uh, he's a good player. But maybe not on the level of Mullen. But um, we'll we'll see how that goes. You know, I'm excited about this weekend, though. I'm really excited. So, um, you know, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, we, you know, and I'll uh, you know I'll tag you guys in it. I'm, I'm just excited. So thank you all for co uh, for coming in and uh, thank Craig and you know. Uh, so when do you guys put out the podcast? Are you going to promote that real quick and uh, for for Mansfield Matters? We go on stream at seven thirty UK time. Uh, every day or every uh, what day? No, no. We? we we only tend to do one a week, and we're doing it earlier this week because of circumstances, and and obviously we've got. Um, uh, uh, the big game on Friday and then next week we'll be able to reflect on Friday and Monday at our podcast because we've got a home game on Easter Monday um, as indeed all of the teams have so uh, it's Easter's the big input it's the big time in the in the league really it's when everything falls into place or not yeah it's a, come through the it's, Easter, I mean, if you come through Easter with a with the right set of results you're going to do all right but you know is... Stockport have got you to play We've yes. got you to play. We've got Milton Keynes to play. You know, it's we've got out of the last eight games, we've played one of them now. We had five of the eight at home. So we've still got four more home games mm -hmm. and three away games. But the two away games that, you know, well, there are three away games. We've got Milton Keynes. After, we've got you guys on Friday. Then we're away at Milton Keynes in a couple of weeks' time. And mm -hmm. then, God forbid, we have to get something from Barrow on the last day of the season. I just... <sighs> We're playing it's well. a long way to go. We'll not get enough tickets. You know, it'll be pandemonium. Well, I'll be sure. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it. It's, it's the squeaky bum time, uh, you know. But it's a business and all the all the all the sayings, and it's exciting time. So, um, we'll just leave it there. just remember one. Just remember one thing. At the end of the day, it is only a game. That's true. Yeah, it's only a game. And yeah, you know, make sure you watch. We'll get you to Ted Lasso to watch Ted Lasso. I think you'll like it. So uh, I've heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> awesome all right clive thank you for coming on uh and thank you to uh thank you to craig and and mansfield matters uh looking forward to this big weekend and uh, on that bombshell